Hi everyone, this is the React Native course. In this course, we'll learn each and every concept of React Native. So we'll start from the scratch and at the end, we'll build some projects using React Native. So we'll build the cross-platform application using React Native CLI and also we'll see how we can use Expo. But our main target will be to use React Native CLI in this entire course. So the topics that we are going to learn in this course, first we'll start with the introduction, what is React Native and how we can use React Native, how React Native works. Then we'll move to environment setup. So all these topics we are going to learn in this course. We'll go step by step. We'll learn each and every topic in detail. Also we'll do the hands-on. Then we'll do some project uh, using react native cli and we'll see how we can publish that to the play store so let's first start with the introduction okay to start with react native let's see what is react native and how we do we use react native so react native is a open source framework which was developed by facebook and then it was open source and it basically allows developer to build the cross-platform mobile application using javascript or also we can use TypeScript that is a typed version that the TypeScript created by Microsoft and also we use React. So in the React Native, the main idea behind React Native is to use the React and JavaScript to build the cross-platform mobile application. Now what does mean cross-platform? Cross-platform are the application that can support both the platform Android and iOS. So using a single code base, we can build android and ios application it basically reduces the development efforts because we don't need to maintain the separate code for android and ios it will be a single source code where we can build the both the application for android and ios okay now what are the requirements to start with react native basically the requirements are we we need some knowledge of javascript and for this course don't worry if you don't know about react because the code that we'll create it will be a beginner friendly and we'll learn react also along with it in a react native code we can build android and ios application and also it supports web there are libraries that we can use to build the web platform code also expo is a another framework that can support uh, by default the web if we are using react native cli then we need to add some dependency to support it for web okay now why react native if we use react native to build the mobile application the first thing that it give benefit is code reusability because we don't need to write the same code and if we already familiar with react then it would be an easy because the concepts are similar and we just need to use the same react using javascript to build the mobile application for in react native in a react native it is a vast eco vast ecosystem there is a huge community support there are so many libraries that we can use it in react native also it gives a better performance because all that will be compiled into native components it has a better performance also react native gives hot reloading feature that means when you are writing the code on the mobile application then in, you can see uh, the changes instantly without building the code again and again some react native alternatives that can be used to build the cross-platform mobile application they are uh, flutter flutter is one of the popular a framework which is which was created by Google and it is popular alternative for with for react native and there are others that are all already existing previous like INIC is one of the framework okay now before starting with the environment setup let's first see how react native works so this is the old architecture the date on which I'm uh, recording this video uh, react native already uh, introduce the uh, new version 0 0.76 which has the new architecture support by default if we need to use the old architecture then we need to go and change the uh, flag to false 
even though we are using a new architecture in the latest version we should have a clarity the old architecture or we can say the legacy architecture so for example this is uh, our react native code that we have built it like the application that the project that we are uh, let's say we are creating so that will be have js code and some libraries that we are using or there can be a native modules also java uh, developed in java and objective c now when we start the react native application uh, there is a, a metro bundler which basically bundle all that file and create a single file bundle.js and this native code compiles and translate into binary files for the respective platform that can be in java and c++ then after building this uh, project we'll get a platform specific file like for android there will be abk and for the ios we'll get ipa file so here the native code can be run in the uh, dev in the native device because it has a support to run that code but js code cannot be run it uh, directly because for the js code we need some engine to run that javascript code in the mobile now ios was having by default to run it the js code but in android it was not there there was a, a javascript uh, virtual machine that was introduced to run the js code now if we have a js code to run it uh, in the native we need some set of program that here is a bridge that basically make the communication happen uh, in in the job in javascript and native code let's say if user is interacting with the screen with the uh, device and it is basically running uh, by the native code now native code set sends a command or sends a data to the javascript vm and it basically serializes that data and send it to the javascript uh, thread that basically uh, the format that they are using is json to send that data json data now once the thread once the javascript vm get that uh, data it dis deserialize it and then process that data and then it send back the signal to the native code uh, via bridge so this is how the communication is happened in the react native if we are using legacy architecture so there is a some bridge a set of programs that can make the communication uh, in the with the javascript and the native code so these are some drawbacks of using the old architecture so in the old architecture all the task was is in cronus and single threaded is basically use a bridge to communicate between javascript and native modules so these limitations basically led to the performance issues the first issue was there was lot of serializing and deserializing it so it is creating a overhead so when it was when it does serializing and deserializing it take time and it was creating uh, the performance issues and also sometime the native and js la layer get out of sync that create a empty space in list or ui jumps so there was some synchronization issues also now here uh, we have new architecture so i'm not going to in detail uh, discussing the new architecture but to just get an idea uh, the overview of new architecture in the new architecture uh, there is no any bridge concept so bridge concept bridge is totally removed uh, for, with from the new architecture and there is a, another uh, program that is calling jsi that is added in the new architecture it is written in c++ it is basically an interface that allows javascript to hold a c++ uh, object reference and vice versa so with a memory reference uh, the js code can directly access the native code uh, through a jsi and vice versa so there is no any bridging concept so now the communication can happen directly there is no any uh, requirement of serializing and deserializing, deserializing it we'll go more in detail about the new architecture later in this course